You're listening to a production of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Welcome, dear friends, to the Taviren, a Wheel of Time podcast hosted by three gentlemen for whom the very wheel itself bends around. Without further ado, here are your hosts, Bill, Rob, and Rich. Ah, bonjour, bonjour, and welcome to another episode of the Tarviran podcast with me, your host, Bill. Hello, welcome. Bonjour. Hello. Yes. Bonjour. Can I say bonjour? I think I said bonjour. Welcome. <laughs> and yes, welcome to another solo Bill episode of um, the Tarviran, a Wheel of Time podcast, where me, Rich, and Rob slowly go through the Wheel of Time series, uh, normally one chapter at a time. Uh, now, <clears throat> uh, as I said last week, Hey, it's just me, <laughs> just me all by myself, um, and I will be going over chapter 50 this week <clears throat> from the Eye of the World, so I'm feeling a bit parched, uh, but yes, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll have myself, Rich, and Rob next week covering um, chapters 51, 52, and 53, because we have reached the end of the book, and I feel like, you know, I don't really want to end it on the last chapter because it's all just like, ah, stuff's happening. <laughs> We're walking through things. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully we won't do that. Uh, but, you know, the, after this chapter, so a lot happens in this chapter today and then uh, even more happens in the next chapter. So hopefully we can sort of condense those three into a sort of a, a big final episode for the last uh, episode of book one. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to see how our schedules line up. Uh, if not, we may get a solo episode for the next one. And then hopefully we can again arrange our schedules to get together so that we can record a um, a special episode on just book one and our thoughts of the entire book. So that would be nice. <laughs> Give you guys something to look forward to. Now, this week we have no iTunes reviews. Mm -hmm. Now, I know how the Amory and Seat Rob feels about this, <laughs> or as we like to call him the Amory and Seat on our podcast. <laughs> what he is in the discord uh yeah we don't have any itunes reviews so i've got nothing to report unfortunately um so um yeah <laughs> what what a dead segment that is each week uh, what we've got no itunes reviews all reviews anywhere else that i can see um so please guys please it really really helps the show a lot if you can leave a, a a review on itunes so if you are on itunes i know it's the biggest chunk of our listeners are please just log on give us Give us, you know, how many ever stars you want and give us a review. It's really good. Uh, and also leave feedback. You know, what do you think is good? Do you like the solo episodes? Do you hate them? Do you wish we could try and avoid them? We wish we could try and avoid them, to be honest. But, you know, we live in a, a strange time. <laughs> I know we were doing this before the coronavirus, but still, I'm going to blame it. Uh, yes, uh, it's a strange time that we live in. So hopefully, hopefully we can all move forward. And hopefully next season, yeah, be careful, folks. Next season, there will be the no iTunes review punishment song. Dum, dum, dum. Anyway, it's time for um, some Wheel of Time news. So, you know, over to you, Bill, with the Wheel of Time news. This is the Wheel of Time news. And now for some news from the lockdown. As spring bursts into bloom and lockdown rolls on, it's time to think about the new season's hot looks. What are you wearing in your hallway or kitchen? Lightweight two-season dressing gown. Wave goodbye to frumpy, outdated trolling robes and slip-on lightweight number that will, as will become tradition, worn for 16 hours every day and will only be removed for Zoom calls and showers. Weird old football shirts. Early lockdown was the area of the sweatpants, but when the sunshine comes, the opportunity to get your knees out in some bizarre old football shorts <laughs> that you honestly <laughs> couldn't cite the problems of, uh, of your life will depend on it, will equally be well met for men and women. Damp, musty workout clothes. Maintaining fitness is critical, but rushing to change afterwards like you used to when back when, <laughs> back when people could see you? Less so. Let your damp, rancid workout clothes act as a welcome cooling system as the days heat up. Five-a-day sock system. Wear your socks for five seconds minimum. A lockdown fashion staple that's going nowhere between seasons. Because really, who is changing their socks every day, right? Even David Gandhi can't see the point. 
half cup bra face marks. Haven't got a face mask? Simply cut, cut an old bra in two and use one cup to cover and support to the lower half of your face. Perfect for the two meter distance filtration and the uh, little cue. Stains. A great way to mark the new season by changing up your stains patterns. White gravy. Uh, wild gravy and tea were all the rage. Uh, the spring palette is all about ketchup, barbecue sauce and smoothies. Where you left the lid off. The, <laughs> where you left the, <laughs> where you left the lid off the blender. Wine stains continue to be very cheap. This is the Wheel of Time news. And that was the news. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, yeah, so no real news this week again. Uh, but if uh, if you are looking for any Wheel of Time news-ish stuff or any sort of um, just Wheel of Time goodness, really, you know, always check out Twitter and check out the... Um, uh, was it hashtag? I forgot what it was. Hashtag Twitter of Time for the latest on all Wheel of Time news. But there isn't any because everything, the whole world's kind of shut down. <laughs> uh, oh well, you know, that's enough ramblings for me for now. Anyway, here's a lovely word from our current sponsors. Do you like video games? Ever thought about making a video game? Do you find that a week or two weeks is kind of short for a game jam? Well, have I got the game jam for you? With the We Can Make This Work, probably, Game Jam. The jam runs from April 20th to June 9th to provide a nice amount of time for you to make something cool. And the theme is, if you can smell their fat, you're not far enough apart. Shout out to the Lebanon Main Fire Department for this meme. Check out the link in the description for more information and to figure out how to join and submit. Have fun! And that was a response. So... What have we got next up? Um, yep, so just to talk briefly over some network things. Uh, on the 20th of April, the uh, We Can Make This Work Probably Network, which is our network, uh, will be starting its game jam. So if you want to uh, join in with our game jam, uh, if you know what a game jam is, it's where you try, you have a very short period of time to create a brand new game from scratch, given a, a subject. Uh, last year, we based it off of um, um, <clears throat> shows from the podcast. And we had quite a few entries. And we had a brilliant one from um, Ball of Mats, uh, which um, it was called Midnight Grub. Uh, and I thoroughly suggest that you go check that out. <laughs> it's just amazing uh, what he came up with. And on a very similar vein, based on a meme from the coronavirus from a fire department somewhere in the States, uh, this year's uh, theme and topic is if you can smell their farts, you're standing too close. And uh, I did ask them clarification on what that meant, and apparently it just means what it means. You can interpret it any way you want. So if we do have any bugging game designers out there, or if anyone loves doing game jams, uh, we accept mods of games as well. So, you know, come and join in the fun and see what you can do based on a fart joke. You know, we are a very mature network here. Just to, you know. So speaking of mature people on the network, uh, Pete, um, <laughs> uh, Pete Bourgelet, uh, our, who's a, a lovely lovely member of our network uh, he is currently running to be a representative of the state of maine um, now i don't know much about that i don't know much about what it means but if you go to maine.gov slash clean elections and donate <clears throat> i believe it was five dollars um if he gets enough he will be able to unlock um some clean uh, some clean election funds in order to uh promote himself so yeah i really suggest that you guys um you guys try and do that, <laughs> especially if you live in Maine. I know one of the things he's aiming for is to create a, um, a Maine-based um, internet service provider run by the state um, to bring out uh, more advanced fiber optic broadband and stuff to the more remote areas. Uh, there was a bunch of towns which he did say that um, you have to be living in one of those towns in order for um, in order to be able to, uh, it's a housing district, I think housing, oh, I can't remember what it was, <laughs> but yes, uh, I did say it last week. So if you are interested, check it out and um, I'll leave a link below to main.gov forward slash clean, uh, clean elections. And that's for Pete uh, Bourgelet. Um, and yeah, and he wants to give you guys uh, good dental care as well. So check that out, please. 
<laughs> I'd, I'd love to have one of our guys on the network be a, a representative for somewhere in the States. That'd be really cool. Anyway, over to this week's discussion chapter. And this week we are discussing chapter 50 of the Eye of the World. Yes, welcome to chapter 50 of Eye of the Worlds, meeting at the eye. So this all starts off in the world of fairy tales and butterflies. Yes, it's the home of the green man, uh, <laughs> which, uh, yeah, Rand is the one who sits there and he goes, oh, do you know what? This is really weird, <laughs> this place. <laughs> it's just like all the fairy tales and stuff that we were told as kids. Uh, and he's right, you know, they've gone from like the most decaying, decrepit place on earth to suddenly popping out into a absolute beautiful green budding garden with lots of flowers it's just a beaut absolute beauty of a place and then ran goes on to mention that um <clears throat> he actually feels really safe and calm in this place and it's it's an odd feeling considering where they've just been and how they were just been <laughs> which was awful <laughs> God damn awful. Uh, so the green man, he, uh, he proceeds to make all the girls uh, nice flowery bonnets for their heads. Okay. Just plonk that on there. Well, you're going on, are you? You're looking rather pretty now. Well, you're looking pretty pretty before. You know, I feel like the, uh, the green man's really creeping on the girls here. <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. Uh, the green man is sort of like, um, he just <clears throat> casually walks along and uh, tends to his garden. And um, it sounds really... It just, it just sounds really nice and tranquil, you know. We're kind of living through some tough times ourselves at the moment, and it'd be really nice to have a nice tranquil garden where a huge giant tree man walks along, touching things and seeing flowers grow. It'd be really nice. <laughs> and uh, Rand is especially careful not to crush the flowers that he notices as he's, uh, as he's walking along on his horse. And then he suddenly notices um, Egwene over there in the yonder and starts thinking about how pretty he is. It's amazing how you could just stick a young boy in a nice sort of flowery environment and suddenly he's just like, mm. <laughs> she's looking good. <laughs> I like your flowery bonnet, Egwene. Mm. <laughs> Rand, you're a creep. Uh, but he says, uh, yeah, he's not trying to be creepy, but he says, oh, I will protect you, Egwene. You know, I'll protect you. Such a, such a chivalrous young man you are, well, man. Although so, uh, so far, Egwene's proven that she's pretty much your equal if not generally better <laughs> let's see how that let's see how that story unfolds <laughs> um uh, and then yeah matt suddenly bursts out you know they get all the way up to uh, where the eye of the world's kept and matt just suddenly goes can i see the tree of life and the green man just like shut up boy <laughs> that's not here uh, yeah tree of life uh, Avin Saunder, i think it's called i think they mentioned that in a previous chapter as well if i remember correctly I may be remembering that wrong. I may be remembering that wrong. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, I think that's um, Moraine mentioned it when they were moving the leaf on the way gate, because um, it's supposed to be a representation of a leaf from Avin Saunder. And I'm probably pronouncing that completely wrong. But you know, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for mispronunciations. So uh, put your letters on a postcard to uh, uh, Rich at Tarbrian Pod, <laughs> and they'll reach him in about six years once the lockdown comes uh, ends. <laughs> Uh, yep, yeah, and the man says that uh, he has the green man. He says, "I have not sat under the um, the eye of the world for a long time, but it is not here." Uh, he also mentions that he will not enter into where the eye is kept. So they're basically looking into this sort of uh, cave at the back end of his um, of his little domain of uh, flowery trees, and uh, yeah, he's just like, "I'm not going down there. <laughs> I was tasked to protect this place, but that is all." And he feels like his end is somehow tied with the eye. Uh, and yeah, he, they also mentioned the fact that it was um, the eye of the world was made by 100 A Sedai of 50 women and 50 men, and they are all now dead. And how, um, yeah, most of the good things of the one power was done with using both sides of the source, Sadin and Sadar. And women, men and female eye Sedai used to work together to create the most intense magic. And a lot of that has now been lost because of the fact that, you know, the uh, the women ace to die, the only ones that are left. And any time there's a man who can potentially channel, they, um, they go and gentle him, uh, which always just makes me think of them just cutting off his balls. Uh, but, you know, the way Robert Jordan sort of, uh, <laughs> describes the gentling process, 
it's probably not far from the truth to be honest <laughs> we've all seen what happens to dogs when you take uh, their, their bits off so uh yeah the same thing seems to happen to the men <laughs> uh you know i just for the record i don't go around cutting off dogs paws you know that's rich's job cool just so we're clear yeah Excellent. Um, <laughs> uh, so they start to descend and they descend down and down and down into the depths until they reach the pool and it looks like an eye surrounded by crystals and the crystals are shining at all various different types of lights and the stone, uh, the surface of the water looks completely still and uh, Matt uh, well, Ran, Ran, oh no, sorry, Matt, yeah, Matt first. <laughs> Matt, being the impetuous son of a bitch that he is, uh, picks up a stone and throws it in the water. And the stone, the stone does not make a splash. It sinks and descends into the water, sort of distorts slightly, and then disappears. And they're all like, uh, uh, what? <laughs> and Ran even surprises himself by just blurting out a moraine. What is it? He demands. Demands of an ace to die. It's really the, uh, one of the first sort of little inklings of uh, defiance that we get from Rand here. Uh, you know, they've all they've been they've been silently defying Moraine throughout the book on various little bits and bobs. But this is the first time where he outright just demands, "What is it?" And she tells him, "It is Sedin, uh, Sedin, the pure, and it's pure Sedin, which is the male half of the source." So, for whatever reason. At the breaking of the world, a hundred male Aes Sedai and a hundred female Aes Sedai got together and um, made a pool of the male source that was not tainted by the Dark One's touch. So they all thought they'd made a, a huge strike on the Dark One. Um, and in the Dark One's final touch, he tainted the male side of the source. And so for some reason, they decided to have this tiny little pool <laughs> filled with the cell. I see. I say tiny. Uh, Moraine actually does describe later on that the, this is a huge amount of the one power, and it would be very difficult for one man to try and control all of that power. Um, and we're not. We're still. Like, she still doesn't explain like what we're going to do with this. You know. Uh, so I've just got a little chapter, a little part of the chapter here which I cut out. Now, uh, apologies if uh, this is the same bit reading to the Rob things, but it just it describes. Um, this moment really well and i couldn't i just wanted to read it out just because it does such a good job of it so many in tarvalon have have attempted to find a way to use this power you know so you know they know of the eye of the world being held by the green man uh, but it is as untouchable for any woman as the moon is for a cat meow meow hey, why is there so many cats in here? um <laughs> um uh, only a man could channel it uh, but the last male Aes Sedai is over 3,000 years gone. Yet they need, um, yet the need they saw was a desperate one. They worked through the taint of the Dark One on Sedim to make it, and to make it pure. Knowing that doing so would kill them all, male Aes Sedai and female, together. The green man spoke true. The greatest wonders of the Age of Legends were done in that way. Sedin and Sedar together. So, yeah, this is, again, it's just, she just explains it beautifully in that one sentence compared to what I just jabbered on about so uh, yeah uh, they, she still hasn't explained what they're going to do with the male half of the one source and when they move out of this weird little sort of um, grotto containing the eye uh, they say so what's the plan and she goes well I brought you guys here because you're all Tavirin wow Moraine you seem like you've got all the answers in the world and your, your response is your Tavirin so I brought you here You know, you probably you probably done the right thing, right? But Jesus, 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 that was a stretch. I have to say, if you'd have told me that while I was sitting in Camden, <laughs> I'd have been like, "You're a dick, I'm going to William." <laughs> I'm not going to the fucking blight. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, I digress. Anyway, two men suddenly show up out of nowhere, coming through the garden, and they have been guided by the Green Man. The Green Man guides everyone who enters his garden. No, he's not, he's not biased. doesn't matter who you are. It turns out to be Aginor and Bathamel. And Ag Aginor is old and decrepit beyond almost all recognition of any sort of human being. And Bathamel is wearing some sort of strange mask, or it looks like a young man laughing hysterically. It's the Forsaken. 
Now, I feel like the Forsaken haven't really come up much in this book so far. <laughs> I think there was quite a bit of a million, uh, you know, as part of the folklore and the fairy tales. And when they first started seeing Trollocs and everything, the boys were a bit worried. But um, yeah, two of the fucking Forsaken have shown up, and the Forsaken are bad, bad news. Uh, land reacts. Uh, as Jordan describes it, quicker than you can see. But Agonor just flicks his arm, like there's a little flick of his hand, and Lan goes flying. And that's it, you know. Lan, who's the hardest bastard we've seen so far in his book, is just easily flicked away uh, with just no effort whatsoever. Nynaeve, enraged by the attack on Lan, goes and goes for Balfamor with her knife. And Balfamor easily overpowers her. And Agonor ventures and mm, women tasty <laughs> not quite like that he says you know it's been a long time since he had the pleasures of flesh uh it's and it's hard for him to remember them but Bafamo remembers <laughs> ah Bafamo. he remembers a lot <laughs> um yes and he sort of uh, easily overpowers Nynaeve <clears throat> and I think she passes out if I remember right uh Egwene then suddenly takes off into action and Rand tackles her to the floor says no you can't fight the forsaken and Matt and Perrin are also running after them but he can only stop Egwene but luckily uh, Aggie, uh Agimor, Agenor, Agenor, Agenor. Agenor seems to have thrown up some sort of invisible wall and Matt and Perrin just bounce off of it but who comes to the rescue now who's going to save everyone it's the green man just suddenly pops up from behind them and goes no you will not harm a living creature here. I will not have it. And um, yeah, Bethamel just absolutely sets him on him and just sets him on fire. And the green man just starts to burn. Burn, burn, burn. As I went down to a burning ring of fire, I went down, 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 and the flames, they grew higher. As it burns, burns, burns. The green man burns in the ring of fire. Anyway, <laughs> for all you uh, Johnny Cash fans out there, I am um, I sincerely apologise. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what would it be about me having a little sing song each week? So, yes, the man sets on fire, but what does he do? He grabs the family and squeezes him really hard. And I love the imagery in this moment because uh, as he starts to squeeze the family and you know really sort of crush starts trying to crush him to death the thumble sort of almost grabs the green man's head as if he's going to rip it off and then suddenly like dark spores and mushrooms and fungus and nettles and all sorts just start sprouting out of the thumble's body so the green man he can create all of the beauty that we've seen so far but also he is nature it's he is the embodiment of nature itself and the forsaken what's best for the forsaken you know you're going to die as a giant fungal pious pile of pus on the floor <laughs> and that's basically what the funnel turns into um <clears throat> and yeah it's just like it's just crazy it just turns him into this huge dark wreathing mess of fungus basically and it's really cool and then the green man sort of almost screams out and starts flowering and growing and he basically grows into this giant oak tree just rooted to the spot and what we see is basically the final throes of the green man as he dies and plants himself as an actual real tree sort of almost like the focusing of all of his growing power he just suddenly does it to make his own his own gravestone in a way or yeah he's yeah, his own headstone as you will a giant oak tree in the middle of his garden and part of it as well he uses his oak and I think it's the roots as well. He uses it to pick up and just cradle Nynaeve to keep her safe. And in that moment, the green man was gone. And then Ag Agenor, who's pretty shocked at this point to see his mate the Fumble just suddenly be, you know, <laughs> turned into a bunch of mushrooms. Uh, he's like, ah, enough of this. And then Moraine's just like, yeah, enough of this. And she attacks with everything she's got she throws it at Agonor and she shouts to run and everyone splits Matt and Perrin run off in one direction and Egwene just sort of stands there almost like staring at Agonor and Rand looking at Egwene realizes she was trying to throw whatever piddling amount of the one power she currently has control of and 
she's trying to help Moraine. And Moraine's just like, no, run. And then him and Egwene finally take off into the trees. But um, Egwene goes off into one of the bushes because he notices Agenor is definitely after him. <laughs> and he turns back over his shoulder and sees Agenor walking towards him, almost as if Moraine's attacks just mean absolutely nothing. It's just like he's walking through fire like a child walking through the rain. <laughs> God, where did I get that? Where did I get that thing from? <laughs> anyway, uh, I was going to be reading uh, Rainy Duck to my little girl. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and as the chapter draws to a close, Rand suddenly hears Moraine screaming. And that's it. That brings a close to chapter 50, Meetings at the Eye. Who did we meet? We met two of the motherfucking Forsaken. And one of them's already dead. So good going. You know? <clears throat> I can't remember how many are. I think is it 10 Forsaken? My, oh, my memory escapes me at the moment. But <clears throat> yeah, you know, <laughs> already one down. That's a good sign. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> Rand is uh, running away from uh, Mr. Agador, uh, the old man looking guy. And so we'll get to see the uh, conclusion of that little, uh, that little ditty in next week's episode. But yeah, um, I really, really love this chapter. <clears throat> we finally get to the eye. We finally learn that Moraine's plan is just as uh, uh, wall-headed as everyone else's. It's just like, yeah, you guys are Tarvir and something's going to happen here in a minute. It's like, yeah, thanks, Moraine. Thanks, Dingbat. <clears throat> what a terrible plan. And what, was, what happens? Yeah, two of the fucking Forsaken can turn up. And what do they do? First thing they do is flick land off into the distance. It's just like, <sighs> come on, come on, girl. Put your finger in your butt. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, but then, yeah, man, meeting, you know, so we've, oh, it's just so much. It's like, suddenly everything just starts exploding in this chapter. Two men, two of the Forsaken, suddenly that's two men wielding the one power as well. Let's not forget the gravitas of that. These are two men willingly using the one power. And they're going slightly mad only because they've been locked away for like 10,000 years or whatever it's been. Um, but even still, just absolute absolute monstrousness it's just great just love it and <clears throat> in the next two chapters it's just even more balls out fun <laughs> oh you couldn't have much more fun if you uh, covered your balls in honey and let the bees have their, have their way on it <sighs> anyway time for some readings with rob and now the taviren present to you readings with rob chapter 50 Meetings at the Eye. Marraine straightened to her full height, no more than shoulder high to any man there, but suddenly seeming as tall as the hills. Her voice rang like a bell, demanding, Who are you? Hands pushed backwards and ran goggled. The old man was older than old. He made Sanbui look like a child in the bloom of health. The skin of his face was like crazed parchment drawn tight over a skull, and then pulled tighter still. Wispy tufts of brittle hair stood in odd places on his scabrous scalp. His ears were withered bits like scraps of ancient leather, his eyes sunken, peering out of his head as if from the ends of tunnels. Yet the other was worse. A tight, black leather carapace covered that one's head and face completely but the front of it was worked into a perfect face. A young man's face, laughing wildly, laughing insane, frozen forever. What is he hiding if the other shows what he shows? Then even thought froze in his head, shattered to dust and blew away. I am called Agenor, the older one said, and he is Balthamel. He no longer speaks with his tongue. The wheel grinds exceedingly fine over three thousand years imprisoned. His sunken eyes slid to the ark. Balthamel leaned forward, his masked eyes on the white stone opening, as if he wanted to go straight in. So long without, Agenor said softly. So long. The light protects. Loyal began, his voice shaking, and cut off abruptly when Agenor looked at him. The Forsaken? Matt said hoarsely. Are bound in Shiloh Ghoul. We're bound. Agenor smiled, his yellow teeth 
had the look of fangs. Some of us are bound no longer. The seals weaken I and I, like Ishmael. We would walk the world again, and soon the rest of us will come. I was too close to this world in my captivity. I and Balthamel, too close to the grinding of the wheel. But soon the great Lord of the Dark will be free and give us new flesh. And the world will be ours once more. You will have no lose there in Kinslayer this time. No Lord of the Morning to save you. We know the one we seek now, and there is no more need for the rest of you. Landsword sprang from its scabbard, too fast for Rand's eye to follow. Yet the water hesitated, eyes flickering to Marain, to Nynaeve. The two women stood well apart. To put himself between either of them and the Forsaken would have him further from the other. Only for a heartbeat the hesitation lasted, but the water's feet moved. Agonor raised a hand. It was a scornful jester, a flipping of his gnarled fingers as if to shoo away a fly. The water flew backwards through the air as though a huge fist had caught him. With a dull thud, Land struck the stone arch, hanging there for an instant before dropping in a flaccid heap, his sword lying near his outstretched hand. Now! Nynaeve screamed. Be still! Marraine commanded, but before anyone else could move, the wisdom's knife had left her belt, and she was running towards the forsaken, her small blade upraised. She cried, striking at Agador's chest. That was Readings with Rob. If there's a passage in an upcoming chapter you wish to have read on the podcast, simply tweet us at Taviren Pod with your request. Yep, so next week, hopefully, we'll have myself, Rob and Rich, do a, a big big three-part episode. So get, get, get yourselves reading chapters 51, 52, and 53, and we're going to finish this book. Oh, man, can you believe we've actually come to the end of book one? Of the wheel of time it's crazy crazy to think of that i say that because i've already um, i've already gone ahead and read the last bit of the book you just can't this how can you not at this stage you know you're researching this chapter you get to the end of it it's like yeah i'm just gonna read it i've read it three times this week but come on i'm gonna read it again <laughs> oh yes yeah, i can't wait for the great hunt just absolutely love that book so guys please show the love of this show by rating and reviewing our podcast on any of your podcatching apps uh, especially itunes if you are listening you know just pop it up, pop in the star rating and give us a very short review. Uh, it really, really helps spread the love of the show. You know, it really, really helps with SSO and all that sort of stuff and actually just widen us out to a, a bigger audience. And don't forget as well, we also currently have a brand new patron and I've got a, already got an episode up there of uh, Tellings of the Wheel and hopefully we should have a lot more bonus content coming out to you uh, fairly regularly as well. We've got lots of stuff planned there. So, you know, you go over there, two bucks a month, helps out the show helps pay for little running costs and things like that and um yeah you know we'll try and get you as much bonus content as possible at the moment it's a bit slim you know i've only put one tellings of the wheel in here because we don't have any patrons <laughs> so so there's no one enjoying that wonderful bit of content but if you want to be the first person to hear the third tellings of the wheel uh, which is the uh, malkia by uh, lord Agin- uh, agimar from uh, uh, faldara that's it um it's an edited version of his speech of uh, basically Land's backstory, uh, and I love I love those. You know, with all the thunder and lightning in the background, they're really they're a really fun little thing to put together. Uh, you know, reach out to us on Twitter, people, and continue the conversation at Tarvrien Pod, and never forget the hashtag Twitter of Time. It's a fantastic community up there, and um, yeah, with the lockdown, you know, it's good to sort of reminisce about the books and all that sort of stuff. But you know, I would be warned: it's an old book series. You will be exposed to spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, join our Discord, where we do have non-spoiler channels and, and spoiler channels if you want, and we can give you a certain role for that. So you know, you know, nice bread roll, bit of butter. You know, you'll love it, and you won't get it spoiled at all. Uh, but yeah, we we do want to hear from you guys. You know, links below for the Discord. Um, again, network-wise, we've got the game jam coming up. Uh, we're trying to get um, Pete um, <laughs> uh, Pete Borgelay. I keep I keep just want to say. Borealis, but that's the uh, that's the guy from Angel, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Pete Bourgelais. <clears throat> uh, we're trying to get him elected as a representative of uh, the state of Maine. So remember, um, 
main.gov slash clean elections, main.gov slash clean elections, main.gov slash clean elections. And yes, we've got our game jam and uh, yep, and Podcasters Assemble is currently covering the James Bond series. So if you're a fan of James Bond, check out Podcasters Assemble at uh, probablywork.com and uh, you can find links to the podcast for that as well. That's a really fun little series that we're going through. Um, yep. Uh, and also don't forget we're on YouTube if you want to watch if you want to listen to the episodes on YouTube uh, for you know for whatever reasons I was gonna say if you was in work and lot of, lot of things are locked down but not YouTube although it's normally the opposite way around but you know everyone's working from home do what you want <laughs> uh, yeah so many places to show your love for the pods just come come and join us whenever you can uh, we oh God, we're even on readable and you can get um, a t-shirt or our logo if you want <laughs> all sorts of stuff but anyway it's time for a drink guys uh, I'm going to go down and I'm going to drink the uh, pure mouse sauce uh, because if I drink the unpure stuff, it's going to be crazy. So yeah, I'm going to go drink that while uh, while uh, Rich and um, Robert dawdling because uh, you know you snooze or lose. Mine, it's mine, it's all mine. It's my power. Ah! <laughs> See you next week, guys. You know, I hope the pattern treats you well. Bye. Now that our heroic trio have left the familiar confines of the two rivers, they find themselves being chased by all sorts of denizens of the Dark One. Our party has been scattered, and the boys separated from Margraine and Lan. Let us hope that luck, or some other force, can keep them safe. Uh, Bill? Bill? Billiam! Put that dagger down! You have no idea where in creation that's been! No, no, Rich. I don't have an extra cloak with me. Maybe if you didn't ride your horse straight into the Aranel, you wouldn't have this problem, hmm? For crying out loud, Robert, I know that girl from Berlon said weird things to you, but you shouldn't let it get under your skin so much. What are you, Eleven? You all remind me of a younger version of myself. Why, back in Watch Hill, I would... This has been a presentation of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Follow us on Twitter at ProbablyWork for more of our questionable content. Also, we have a website called ProbablyWork.com.